<laughs> Hi everybody. So my name is Jerome. Today I'm going to explain why the future of sports marketing is multi-channel. So um, through the year, I've, what I've found is that working with a range of sports brands and when we're advising them about their sports marketing strategy, over the years, what we've seen is that more and more people are thinking multi-channel. So what I mean by multi-channel is, so it used to be all about Google Ads, yeah, on search. Um, but now, obviously, the choice is much wider, yeah? So companies can advertise via email remarketing. They can use display remarketing. Programmatic, if you've got large, but large enough budget, then you're looking at a display campaign via uh, programmatic. YouTube is obviously a big channel. Uh, Twitter, and then the Facebook family, Facebook or Instagram. So there is a range of things available, of channels available. And there is actually a study by Ofcom where they looked at the average UK user and they've got six channels, six uh, social channels, uh, the average UK users, which might seem like a lot, but I went through mine and I've got LinkedIn, WhatsApp, Facebook, uh, and I've got some, uh, some more channels that do bring me up to that average. So when you're looking at sports marketing, very often you'll have pink people will be ping-ponging between those channels. So if you've got um, an event coming up, people might first hear about it on Facebook. You might have some advertising on Facebook. Then they go on YouTube and then they see another ad about it. Then they start thinking about, oh yeah, I should ask my friends if they want to attend that event. And then once they're committed to it, they might do a search and find your ads on Google search. So. Here you would have three touch points before someone actually commits to it. And the idea of multi-channel is basically looking at where you need to be to make this journey most efficient. At what point did you, do you need to advertise and what is the best mix that you need to aim for? So, why you should go multi-channel really is because that's where your user base is, and you need to follow where they are. But it's even more than that. It's also because some channels are better suited for different objectives. And I'll go over it uh, in more details later on. This is a study that we've done of UK internet users. And we've asked them, where do you go for your sports news? And you can see the profile differs very much based on the age range. So here you see younger people tend to look at social. That's where they get their news. So they find out about sports news from Twitter or from Facebook. Older people, they go online still to get the sports news, but they will look at traditional um, online portals to get their news. So if you're trying to target the whole age range, it's very important to be both on social and on display. Yeah? And even if you're looking at one age range, nobody is exclusively in one channel. So people will be both on social and, and display, even within one age, ra age range. So from that, you can see why it's important to be in more than one channel. And the other thing again is, what is your objective? Yeah? So I'm going to go over three popular objectives and see what is the best channel that suits that objective. So the first one would be fan engagement. So you're a brand and you want to make sure that your community of fans stay engaged and they know your brand and they like your brand. That will be the first objective. Second one is getting bums on seats. So you've got an event, you want to make sure that people attend that event. 
And the last one we'll look at is merchandising. So you have, whether it's jerseys or uh, caps, anything brand, sports equipment, and you want to make sure that people purchase from you. So where do you think that for a fan engagement campaign, yeah? Where do you think you would advertise? Any idea? Anybody wants to volunteer? Where, where do you think is the best? Okay, who thinks social would be a good place? Yeah, of course. So fan engagement is about creating a community. So for those, you will look at social channels. Um, so because you're targeting your fan base, there are very good tools with Facebook, for example, where you will be able to re-engage anybody who's liked your post or anybody who's viewed your video. So you know who your, who your fans are and you can just focus your campaign on them. At this stage, you want to raise awareness. So there are lots of different ways you can keep engagement up. Uh, you could be doing a competition or a trivia quiz, or you could be releasing exclusive contents for your fans. Um, let's, let's take the example of if you're doing a competition, yeah? So if you're doing a competition, then you'll obviously want to, you target your audience, so it could be a GDPR compliant list. So you're looking at people who have bought your product or interacted with your brand, and you can retarget them once they're on social network. Or it could be people you, who know, you know have interacted with your brand. And once you've targeted them on the social network, then you're starting to get in your, your responses. And if it's a competition, obviously then you will go on to announce who the winner is, yeah? This is an example of a campaign we've done for UFC. So UFC Martial Arts event, we do a lot of uh, work with them for uh, ticket sales. But this one was slightly different. This is a campaign to celebrate their 25 years. So they did a competition where they asked people to say, talk to us about your experience. So it was talking to their fans, telling us, tell us a story about uh, your experience with UFC. The way we did it, as I explained, was retargeting people who've engaged with the UFC post in the past, people who liked UFC. And so if you look at the campaign, that's the kind of ad we ran, so very personalized things. So we, we targeted 650,000 users, and 83,000 of them clicked on the ad. So that gives you a 13% interaction rate, a click-through rate, which is amazing. And there it's all due to the fact that you're targeting people who are engaged with your brand. So if you've got a campaign that's very focused on who knows you already, then it's quite easy then to achieve good click-through rate. Um, and that, because of that high engagement, you end up with very cheap uh, cost you can engage your finance as, for very cheap. Uh, now if we move on to ticket sales, do you think we'll stay with social only at that point? Anybody? No. Exactly, because ticket sales, then you're no longer talking about community. You'll have to start moving into selling items, yeah? So you'll have a wider mix. So, if you've got an event and you're going to, you know that you're going to want to sell tickets at some point, um, you're going to use YouTube is a very good one to engage people. So this is all about getting impression at this stage because you are the awareness stage. You want people to know that your event is happening. So things that will give you good and cheap impression will be YouTube, or display. Then you might want to move into a place where you're trying to get email addresses of people interested in your event. 
So the tickets are still not on sale, but then you're moving to a lead gen campaign. So at that stage, you will want to move on to Facebook, for example, because Facebook, you probably all know that, has very good lead gen campaign. So with those campaign, the form is already pre-filled, so people just see your ad, click on it, and their information is already filled in with their profile's information. And that allows you to get leads very uh, cheaply. And the reason why people want to give their details at that stage is because you give them a special access code. So you say, you know, tickets are coming on sale in two weeks' time, get your special discount, count, discount code now. And they fill in the form to get that code. And that allows you at the next stage, once you meet demand, you can retarget those people because they've got that access code and tell them now the event is on sale, subscribe. Um, but that's not, so that's what you use in your remarketing. Yeah, you've got those email addresses. You'll also want to move on Facebook. So you might want to target anybody who is interested in the sport that you target. Anybody who lives within a certain radius of your event who likes that sport, you can target them with your ad. So that's what you'll do on social. And finally, on Google, what you'll do is anybody searching for your event name, people searching for the name of uh, players, if you've got an event, you'll target them on search. So that's why here you can see you need quite a diversified mix at that point. So a great example of what you can do with event marketing is what we've done with uh, Wimbledon Rematch. So they wanted to create um, an immersive theater kind of event where they replayed the 1980 um, game between Borg and McEnroe. So it was meant for your, uh, fans to re-engage with the glory days, if you want, of tennis from the 80s. So they had a new kind of event, and the challenge was introducing people to that event. It had never been done before, so it was presenting people with what that event looks like. And what we did, we used a combination of channels. So people would first hear about the event on Facebook. Then we would show them Instagram stories. We would then also show them YouTube videos, which was very good because we needed to show them what it was going to look like, that event. And then finally, we were moving them on to Google search. And we targeted, uh, obviously, tennis fans within London, but also people who liked retro event, retro fashion, and uh, anybody who was interested in going out and uh, experience like that. So this is the kind of ad we run again, and we were able to fill the event for, uh, for this. The last one I wanted to talk to you about today was sell, merchandise selling, yeah? So on that one, um, do anybody wants to give a guess? Nah, okay, I'll give you. So if you've got a merchandise that's very hot, yeah, something that's uh, in high demand, you might want, before the, the item is released, to have some sort of awareness. So that would work for um, a kit that people are looking up for, you know? So then you might want, on social media, to raise awareness of, the, of that kit. And you might want to have a pre-order phase here. Then you launch your event, yeah? You, you launch your kit, sorry. Here it's very important to be on Facebook and on Google. So on Facebook, you would do product catalog ads. And on Google, you would do shopping ads. Both of them are very good because it pulls the information from your website. It, it will show the, uh, the item and the price below it. Yeah? So those ads are very good when you try to generate a purchase. Yeah? 
So that's what you do at that stage. And also remarketing for anybody from the previous phase, which you want to target now. Um, and again, if you've got a kit for a specific team, you probably want to target people who are fan of that team at that stage. And very, very important if you're selling merchandise is to retarget people. So the obvious one is if you've got an online shop, you want to be able to remarket to anybody who added the basket abandoners, anybody who added the items, and then they dropped out. It's essential that you remarket them. And I think pretty much everybody does that nowadays. But you need to go further as well. So for example, you also need to target people who have uh, recently converted. So they've recently converted, you can now upsell them or show them a range of products that's similar to what they've just bought. And the last one you want to do as well in terms of remarketing, anybody who's bought, let's say a year ago, but you know it's a cyclical purchase. So it might be that a year ago they bought a specific kit, but it's a new kit that has been launched now. You do want to retarget them. So you have to think of different customer journey, and then you can do a remarketing that's appropriate. Um, we've got done work with fanatics. They sell uh, sports equipment for mostly American sports, but also traditional football. Um, and we've done campaigns in Germany, France, and Spain for them. And as I said, we've done shopping and product catalog. And for them, what was very important is that we had a campaign that was very dynamic. So, for example, if you've got a team that does very well and is very popular in one country, you want to have automated systems that can rebalance where the action is, where the demand is. So you have something that needs to rebalance between countries. And you also need to have systems that rebalance your bids based on the performance of the campaign. So for example, you need to have something that works on target ROAS. So it will be a system where if the item that you're selling is worth a lot, then the system should bid more. And so you need to have something like that that will adjust based on the prospective value of your basket. Yeah? So by doing all of that, we were able to achieve uh, great orders and at a low cost. So to finish, what I want to leave you with is that multi-channel is very important. So you do need to go across the board. Of course, we all live with, within limited budget, so it's normal to have a preferred channel, but don't, don't necessarily prejudge what's going to work. It's usually good to try different channel, and then you weed out the one that you find out don't perform well. And keep in mind that the last one that performs well, it might be that it came because you were in those other channels that brought a final conversion. Um, and keep in mind what your objective is, yeah? So broadly speaking, if you're looking for engagement, then you want to be on social, you need to be on Facebook and Twitter. If you want endpoint and you need a sale, think of Facebook again, but in a different way, different kind of format, and think of Google, yeah? So, that's all I've got today. Now I think Ben is going to. Oh, yeah.